but it's going to be awesome. Are you ready? You know why? Because I found in my Bible that now is the time. Now is the time. For what? Salvation. Now is the time for salvation. You guys know the, the word salvation is soteria, right? It, it means pretty much almost the same as the Greek word sozo, which is saved. And I know that you all know this, but I just want to start with some basics if we could. I'm a basic guy. I just, I believe in the simplicity of the gospel. I believe not, I don't believe in making it technical. I believe that Jesus said, unless you become like a child, you can't get it. So we have to put off our brilliance sometimes to get back to the simplicity. As a matter of fact, let me start with that. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And let me, let's go there. <clears throat> Ready? Okay. All right, so, so Paul's teaching here, and, and uh, I know y'all know that, but it says, oh, that you'd bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me. He says, for I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy because I have betrothed you to one husband. This is awesome, awesome language. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. That's also awesome language. I love it. But he says, but I fear lest somehow as the, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your mind might be corrupted from the simplicity and the pure devotion that's in the Christ. And it says, for if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit that you've not received, or a different gospel that you've not accepted, that you may well put up with it. That's some pretty intense words. Let me go back. See, I've, I've got a burning inside of my heart to, I've, I see something that's so clear. I shared it earlier. It's hard, to, I share the same thing a million different ways because it, it is all about right standing with God. It is all about righteousness. It is because that gives me confidence. So we talk about healing and we wanna pray for people to be healed. Well, the first thing that needs to happen is you need to be healed in your soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, this thing needs to be healed. You need to be healed from all of your past, from everything you came out of, from the reality. You need to be in the reality of what Jesus says about you. So if I see that all my guilt, all my shame, and all my condemnation have been wiped out, I therefore have no ability to live in guilt, shame, and condemnation today. If I don't understand that, I, I have to back up. I have to back up to the very simplicity of this thing. It's in Hebrews 5.14, it says, not many, you know, it says many of you should be teachers. He said, but you need someone to take you back to the very first principles and oracles of God. And you've come to need milk instead of solid food. For solid food is for the mature who have their senses trained to discern between both good and evil. That's what it says. Then right after that it says, for they have been trained in righteousness. See, training in righteousness is what we need to do. We need to return back to the basics and the simplicity of the gospel. What did Jesus do? Like I said earlier, did he pay a price to just get me to heaven? Or did he pay a price to get heaven into me? And if heaven got into me, when heaven got into me, what had to leave me? I have to see this and I have to go back here. Why? Because if I don't start here, I am going to be intimidated by people. See, we're not just talking about prayer for in a building. We're talking about you living as a conduit for God to use you everywhere you go. I don't believe it's for certain individuals. I believe that you and I, scripture says that you and I are to reign as kings in this life through the free gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. So the abundance means the violently excessive amount of grace that enables me to unwrap the gift of righteousness and stand up in it. That's exciting. Most people don't get excited. It's the weirdest thing. We're like, yeah, tell us something we don't know. If you knew it, if you knew it, you would never be embarrassed to share your faith again. The proof of you knowing what I'm saying is that you will never be intimidated to share the truth. You don't have a truth. You have the truth. You don't have some kind of truth. Like Jesus isn't some kind of way. This isn't Burger King. This isn't have it your way. Amen. This is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says that we are to be, in, in Ephesians 5, we are to be imitators of God, 
dear children, and walk in love. We're supposed to walk just like Jesus walked. The Bible says in 1 John that if anybody say that they abide in him, they ought walk just as Jesus walked. The Bible says that if anybody has this hope in him, it's also in 1 John, if anybody has this hope in him, they ought purify themselves just as he is pure. The Bible says just as. That means exactly like. Jesus said he came to represent the Father. They wanted to kill him for it. What makes you think that people are going to be happy when you step into the same ministry that Jesus had? Are you with me? We have to get into this place of understanding that you're going to be persecuted for your faith. If you're not persecuted, you're not living godly. Okay, I'll come down there. This is in Timothy. In Timothy 3.12, it says... It says, all of those that desire to live godly will suffer persecution. So if I'm not being persecuted, I'm not living godly. Do you understand? That's a pretty simple statement. It doesn't say preach godly. It doesn't say talk godly. It doesn't say think godly. It says live godly. All of those are included, but living godly is something different. You're putting feet to your faith. In the midst of culture, in the midst of twistedness, in the midst of a world that's going quickly down, it says to arise and shine for your light has come. Darkness and deep darkness will cover the earth, but not so with you. Why? Arise and shine. It doesn't say arise and reflect. You are called to shine. Philippians, you are called to shine in the midst of a perverse and corrupt generation amongst whom you shine as lights in the Lord. This is not this little light of mine. (laughs) Jesus came to us. He was the light of the world and in him was the light of all men. He tells us that now you're the light of the world. You're a city on a hill. You're a light that lights up his own house. Guys, This is not complex. This is simple. It's the simplicity of the gospel. We have complicated it. When he says, I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. What does that mean? And why would he use that language with us? I mean, it's kind of crazy. What is a virgin? Someone that's never been with anybody before. So when I come to Christ, is it not also true that it's as if I've never been with the world before? What if I fail to realize and grasp the simplicity of this gospel, which separates me from the pure devotion that's to the Christ, to where I have brought this thing in as theory rather than intimacy? I need to understand that when I receive with meekness the implanted word that is able to save my soul, this isn't beam me up, Scotty, like, Get me out of here. This is the saving of the soul, the salvation of the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions coming into full, full transformation. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed, metamorphosed from a, like a, from a caterpillar into a butterfly to where my mind is thinking the way that God thinks. I want to be so heavenly minded that I'm earthly incredible. I don't want to be so heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good. No, God wants us to be so anointed, but he wants us to do our jobs as unto the Lord and perform at such a pace and such a rate that it's not humanly possible. But he wants us to live and walk with the miraculous flowing through us at all times. He doesn't want us to just go to church and pray for somebody there. He wants us to live our lives being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, actually the body of Christ, which Ephesians defines as the fullness of Are you guys hearing me? I want to live my life. Why would I want to get to heaven and realize all the opportunities that I didn't get? Why wouldn't I want to live my life fully abandoned to the cause? Like, you're never going to die. Let me me just go over that real quick. See, it's appointed once for men to die. But the Bible says, Jesus said, he who lives and believes in me, I am the resurrection and life. He who lives and believes in me will never die. <clears throat> so I'm going with that. That doesn't mean that this tent is going to be 10,000 years old. 
I'm going to put off the tent one day. But when I do, I want you to understand that it's going to be like this. <laughs> no, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When my Bible says to redeem the time, the days are evil, that means that every second that you have, all of us, the bank of time opened this morning. And all of us have the same amount of hours, the same amount of minutes, and the same amount of seconds. The question is, whose time, what are you gonna do with the time that's been allotted to you? Are you gonna live it for yourself, or are you gonna give it all to the king? Are you gonna go after him with everything you are? And are you willing to look like a fool for Jesus? The Bible says that it's been granted to us in Philippians 1, it's been granted to us the privilege of suffering for his namesake. It's been granted to me the privilege of suffering. People don't like that. They don't like suffering. They want things nicey nice. Do you understand that you are required to be uncomfortable for the comforter to show up? He's called a comforter because you're required to be uncomfortable. You're required to be in uncomfortable situations that if he doesn't show up, you're not comfortable. But we so rely on our own comfortability and that's why we kind of don't step out. And we say we don't live with the fear of man, but when you can't witness, you have the fear of man. Yeah. The word witness actually means martyr. Jesus says, then you will be my martyrs to the end of the earth. <laughs> People don't think that way because we so jealously guard and protect what we have. And you can't afford to jealously guard and protect what you have. What you do is you jealously guard and protect your relationship and your intimacy with Jesus. And you hold on to God tightly, but you hold on to everything else loosely. First and foremost, our intimacy with God, because you're gonna look at Jesus. Jesus didn't do the miracles as God when he was here. He was fully God, but he was also fully man. If I don't understand that, then when people say to you, who do you think you are, Jesus? It's gonna just, it's gonna rock your world and you're gonna be like, well, no, I'm not Jesus. But here's the facts. Jesus did no miracles until John the Baptist baptized him in the river Jordan and the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit came and rested upon God the Son and remained. Are you with me? No miracles are recorded. His parents lost him when he was younger. That's it. There's nothing else. Don't add to it. Don't. Don't add to the Bible. It's very important. We have to understand the incarnate. We have, to, we have to see this fact right here or I cannot walk the way that Jesus told me to walk. Yes. Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man, but he had to lay his divinity aside. He had to humble himself and he had to become a bondservant. He had to be tempted at all points yet without sin in order for him to fulfill the old covenant to bring us into the new. Right. Are you with me? Yes. This has to be in our understanding and this isn't taking divinity away from Jesus. This is putting it into the Philippians 2 perspective that Paul preached it. Why? Because Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, grew up as a young man, just like us, was tempted at all points, yet without sin. Now, if Jesus was tempted at all points, and scripture says that it is impossible for God to be tempted, that means that Jesus did not do this as God, he did this in his humanity. Was he fully God? Absolutely, but he had to humble himself, become a bondservant, and he had to be tempted at all points. Come on, yeah. yet without sin. Yeah. So Jesus in his humanity came here, even though he had fullness of divinity, he laid his divinity aside, humbled himself, became a bondservant, was tempted at all points, yet without sin. Why? Because the covenant that was made between God and man, God and Moses, had to be fulfilled. Say, what does this have to do with healing? Everything. Everything. Because Moses was this man that God made covenant with. God did not want to do it with Moses. God wanted to do it with the children. When they came to Mount Sinai, they cried. They whined. They said, you talk to him, we'll listen to you. They never listened to Moses. Moses received the law, 10 commandments, 613 laws, pretty tough shoes to fill. The law wasn't the revelation of how we could get to God. It was revealing how far away we were from God. We know that. So Moses is given these 10 commandments and the law and all the way through, Jesus Christ comes and is born of the Virgin Mary. He is born in his humanity, not in his divinity. Very important. Please don't hear me wrong because religion says Todd's taking away divinity. No, I'm preaching the gospel. 
If we don't know this, we can't step in. Why? Because if I think Jesus did the miracles as God, I can't follow that. But if he did the miracles as God's son, filled with God, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, now I can follow that. If I don't see this little piece, which is a huge piece that the devil wants to try to tragically confuse Christians in, well, Todd White takes divinity against God. That little war that you have right there will separate you from walking in the supernatural. And you will call cessationist, cessationism a doctrine, but it's a doctrine of demons. I really could care less about all that stuff, buddy. I've walked with people that say it's not real and I've watched Jesus heal people in front of them. I've watched them weep and tremble with the fear of God. I am not intimidated. Your unbelief won't stop my belief. I'm serious. I've walked hand in hand. I've had pastors try to set me up and go out on an outreach with me saying, well, we don't believe in this. We're gonna prove he's wrong. They came there to expose me. Then I go on an outreach and they're in the car weeping, getting delivered of demons. I am not intimidated. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm a living dead man. I love God with all my heart and I love you. I love you enough to not let your sin against me produce sin within me. I live with me, I know. This smile doesn't come just because of the day. This smile doesn't go away because Jesus lives in me and he loves people. Okay, so Jesus grows up into, this, into a man, and Jesus had no miracles flow through him, and at 33 years of age, right? 33 and a half, actually, he goes up on the cross. But three years earlier, Jesus goes down to the River Jordan. John the Baptist is baptizing. Now, in order for us to be right with God, we have to obey 613 laws and 10 commandments, not missing one. James 2.10 reiterates the law and says, if you miss one, you transgressed all. So Jesus Christ coming down to the River Jordan had fulfilled righteousness. John the Baptist looks at Jesus when he comes down there. Jesus says, John, I need you to baptize me. And, and, and John is like, uh, uh, I need you to baptize me and yet you're coming to me. And Jesus said, let it be so for it is necessary so that righteousness be fulfilled. The fulfillment of righteousness is that God said, if you are diligent to not go to the left or to the right, it will be accounted to you righteousness. So Jesus Christ is about to attain righteousness because he walked out all the laws and he, didn't, he never missed one. So Jesus gets baptized. The heavens were torn open, not just open, but torn. They were rent. God went, Ugh. Ripped the heavens open. The Holy Spirit came down, rested upon Jesus and remained. Jesus was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness and was tempted. Are you with me? First temptation, what did he say? If you really are, do something to prove it. Change these, these stones into bread. What did Jesus say? Man doesn't live by, by every word that comes from God. He used scripture, but let's not forget when Jesus went down into the river Jordan, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Why did that voice come? That voice came because of righteousness being fulfilled. So the fulfillment of righteousness brings the voice, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So Jesus just heard he was the beloved son that God's well pleased with. The devil says, do something to prove it. God just told me I'm his beloved son in whom he's well pleased. Faith comes by hearing and Hearing by the word of God. Are you guys, are you here? Come on, Jesus is tempted. The devil takes him up to a, to a high place and, and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. He says, all these kingdoms, I can give them to whoever, whoever I wish because they were delivered unto me. How did he get them? Adam. Adam handed his authority, handed the authority over to the enemy. The enemy's dangling keys in front of Jesus. Come on, guys, think with me. Jesus didn't come to bow. He came to die. So the enemy gets three temptations right there. He waits for a more opportune time. Jesus comes out in the Holy Ghost and power. Watch this, Acts 10, 38. God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why would Jesus need anointed if he was God? I need you to think with me. 
God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil. Where does all sickness come from? The devil. Yeah, but what if I had like, what if I smoked and my lungs are hurting? Don't I reap what I sowed? Ah, in the kingdom, you reap what God sowed. I better think. Man, people that, people that have smoked, people that have track marks, people that have hep C, people that have cutting scars, all those different things. If you could go back and change it, you would. You wish you never did. I've heard ministers tell them, well, God's trying to keep you humble. I think that's so stupid. What kind of a father do you serve? Do you think that God wants to keep you humble with track marks or remove them? Watch, if I come to Jesus and I came to him and he forgave me, he didn't just forgave me, he forgot. So if he forgot what he forgave, I need you to hear this. When I come to Jesus, how much sin does the blood of Jesus cover, some or all? Okay, why don't I believe it? See, here's what it does. If I don't believe that from the beginning, it keeps me in the cycle of sin. Why? Because guilt, shame, and condemnation come, and then you're taught you're a sinner, what do sinners do? They sin. So now all of a sudden I'm in a hamster wheel. Well, you never, we're never gonna be, we're never gonna be, we're never gonna be. It's so anti-gospel, it's so anti-truth. God doesn't teach that ever, religion teaches that. Religion teaches that and then they call it humility. It's not humility, it's stupidity. Why would I wanna think, look, the devil is hopeless, depressed, angry, defeated. He is absolutely in unforgiveness. He's in bitterness and there's no chance for him. He is trying to reproduce that mindset in every Christian on the planet. So why would I allow him to fill my mind with that stuff? Why won't I just believe? See, to believe, why? Because it's too simple to just believe. Well, I just read in my Bible that it says that I have betrothed you to one husband. Then I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear that just as Satan deceived Eve, how did he deceive Eve? He got her to question what God say. Did God really say? Did God really say? So now he's getting Christians to, to question the word. And if he gets you to question the word, you've taken Psalm 138 verse two, that God has magnified his word above his own name, and you've put it down here, which is a problem. And anytime you take God's word and make it less than what he made it, you're in big trouble. This is powerful. Amen. It is powerful. It's <laughs> super, super powerful. Amen. Do you know that we have one of the most ailing things I believe in the body of Christ? It's not just mental disorder, it's depression. Yeah. Depression, anxiety, fear, regret, worry. It's one of the number one epidemics in the body of Christ, in the whole church worldwide. But in America, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You hear pastors killing themselves. Like all this craziness that's going on. And honestly, it is the simplicity of the gospel that brings your heart back, that enables you to live free from depression, free from anxiety, free from fear, and free from regret. With drug addiction, with those things that I said, like hep C, cutting scars, if it's true that Jesus sees me as if I've never sinned, as if I never ate in the tree. That's how he sees me. If you don't see yourself like that, then you're gonna live in the devil's playground. You need to see yourself like that. What does scripture say? In, uh, are you guys with me still, are you okay? Yes. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 17, it says, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, right? That means that where he's not, there's bondage. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding what? As in a mirror. What are we beholding? The glory of the Lord. Well, where is he? In you. So when you see with your lamp being clear and clean, one focus, you see him inside staring back at you. If you don't see according to the gospel, you see your faults, your failures, your shortcomings, and the things that you wished you'd never done. That is not the gospel. This, this doesn't take a genius, it takes a child. 
It takes a child to believe that their father is that good. When Jesus healed the sick, he didn't heal the sick as God. He healed the sick as God's son filled with God. But he healed the sick in his humanity covered with divinity. Oh, this is a good one. We say, well, yeah, well, but Jesus was without sin. I mean, he was perfect. Well, how much sin does the blood of Jesus cover, some or all? Okay. So if the sin problem has been dealt with, maybe I need to get back to believing the basics of Christianity and believe that he did forgive me and he didn't just forgive me, he removed my sins as far as the east is from the west. And if you go east in a world that's a circle, you get never hit west. If he took my sin and he threw it into a sea he calls forgetfulness and that, and that sea is called forgetfulness for a reason. <laughs> See, God, God doesn't hold and keep a record of wrongs once the blood of Jesus has come. Listen, here's the deal. Why, why would God remove uh, hepatitis C, remove scars, remove cutting scars, remove track marks? We're seeing the most glorious. We're seeing blood completely healed. We're seeing HIV completely removed. We're seeing sexually transmitted diseases completely leave. Why? Because if God's not going to judge you for where you've been, then how can where you've been still be judging you? If you could go back and change it, you would, but you can't, but he can. If old things passed away and behold, all things became new, if all things became new, why would I lessen the all to fit my circumstance? Well, I know it says all but. No, all buts and what ifs are devils. <laughs> See, you're looking at a guy that was bipolar, that was borderline schizophrenic, that was manic depressed, that dealt with all the mental stuff, that heard voices say, kill yourself all the time. And when I got rescued, what I did, because I never read a book before, I couldn't read, I had ADHD, I had, I had you name it. I had it. I had a lifetime subscription to Issues. Jesus canceled it, <laughs> returning it to sender. I had ruined my body from drugs. I'd ruined my lungs from smoking. They say weed doesn't hurt. I smoked a lot of weed for a long time. Colorado, I know that they don't have weed here. <laughs> I did for all my life. I thought that's why, you know, this makes me feel good. Man, the reason why we need stuff to make us feel good because we don't know that he is good. Because when you step into this, your heart gets completely free. You become the most functional Christian on the planet. Guilt, shame, condemnation, and regret will never have you. I want you to tap the person next to you, see if they're sleeping. This is not a good session to sleep in, I promise. It's not. I'm watching people go, did you ever see that? Someone sleeping there agreeing with you? Yes. Come on, I just flew in from Australia, man. Come on. You just had a pork sandwich. <laughs> Probably. God's love is profuse. Why does God heal? Because he loves us. You know what the Bible says? These signs will follow them that in my name they'll cast out demons. First sign of a believer. Have you ever seen that before? In public? I just love it so much. I've been on airplanes with crazy, craziness with airline attendants manifesting demons screaming and foaming at the mouth. And all the people going, you can't just leave it there. It is the privilege that I have when somebody has a demon to kick that thing out and to fill that space with Jesus. So many people are trapped. I'm gonna just share a couple of things and then we're gonna pray. I'm using a lot of time to teach because I believe in teaching, I believe in equipping. I, I, my heart cry is to equip you as a saint so that you realize your absolute rights as a Christian, knowing 
who God created you to be. I had a lot of people tell me things because when I started to pray for people, and I can't go back into that or we'll never get to where we gotta go. But when I first started to pray, people told me, well, dude, the prophet's without honor in his hometown. And I was like, okay, I need to find that scripture because I prayed for 900 people plus before I saw one person heal. And the key wasn't that like, I just didn't see him healed. The key was I needed power because I was praying without power. Can you imagine trying to fire a bullet without gunpowder? Can you imagine trying to start your car and run without gas? Can you imagine a jet going anywhere without fuel? That would be sad. You ain't going nowhere. Jesus wants us to walk in power. He wants you to be equipped with power, but he wants you to be filled with identity so that you don't become an orphan blowing up stuff. That's why I teach identity. That's the core message. Because if I know who I am when power comes, I know what it's for. If I don't know who I am when power comes, I'm trying to build my own kingdom. That's tragic. Because you will go down building your own kingdom. And you will think that it's all about you and everybody else. Not about them. It's about me. And if you don't have what I have, then that's just demonic. Yeah. Yeah. So people told me a prophet's without honor. So I look at the scripture, prophet's without honor sometimes. You know, Jesus could do no mighty miracles. And I see that scripture and I'm like, oh, well, that's like, it doesn't make sense, like to me. Like, can you imagine, I just need you to picture this. Can you imagine Jesus coming to preach in Nazareth and them having a person that has been an invalid all their life, 45 years, and bringing them up in front of Jesus on a stretcher, setting him in front of Jesus, and Jesus praying, Get up. And him looking around at the people's unbelief and him letting their unbelief influence him. I said, get up. Guys, come on. I need you to believe with me so this guy gets up. Do you think that that's Jesus? But we have painted the picture of a prophet without honor in his hometown of because not everybody's for you. Here's where it limits you. I go into a room, I've got 12 unbelievers, cessationists in the room. I got one person in a coma. Nobody believes in healing, but I'm called to go into that room. So now I go into the room, and when I get there, everybody can't stand me, everybody thinks that I'm a heretic, but I'm there for one purpose. I'm there to see them get up. Now I've got all these people that are against me. If I'm not sure of who God's created me to be, and I'm not sure of the Christ in me, and I'm not sure that the Bible says these signs will follow them that believe, I will let that surrounding place influence my faith, and my excuse will be they need to be in greater faith, and then it'll happen. If you can find one situation where Jesus said, come back when you have more faith, it's not God's time, Look, we just have a problem here. Everybody else. No, you won't find it because Jesus Christ knew who he was. But we've taken that scripture and we've allowed it to limit us and stop us from praying in faith for situations to change. Stop letting lies influence truth. You be the person of faith. You step in there and you say, get up in Jesus name. Because I've watched people get out of comas. I've watched them be healed. I've watched them get out of wheelchairs when everybody else is against me. Who let you in here? How did you get here? I'm holding a toe. I'm just here to pray. We didn't ask you to come. Well, somebody did. Well, we want you to leave. Sorry. Now it's the family, so you have a real epidemic. You have a family that wants you to leave. But when they sit up on that gurney, healed, they'll change their mind. How about this one? Don't, don't lay hands on people hastily. It's in Timothy. So people have taught, you gotta be careful who you pray for because if you're not careful, what's in them can get on you. If what's on you is more powerful than the Christ in me, I'm in trouble. That's trash. That's a lie from hell. I don't care if you're a witch. I don't care what you are. What you have is not more powerful than the Christ in me. What you have is not more powerful than the God I serve. You will not limit who God is in me. And your unbelief will not limit my belief. The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick. Come on, the sick. They sick. The sick. So the Bible says they will recover. Doesn't say they could. 
Doesn't say they ought to, it says they will. Are you hearing me? We've allowed all kinds of things to come in and limit this. How about the guy at the, at the, at the, at the pool? You know, Jesus is, he comes in there and there's lots of people sick. And he comes up to the one and he says, do you want to be made well? And he says, how oh, and the water's stirred. No one's here to help me. I, I can't get in. Pick up your mat and walk. And the man's strength came back into his body. He's completely healed. The Pharisees, I love this. Who told you to carry your mat on the Sabbath? The man who healed me. Who was it? I don't know. <laughs> Think with me. Who told you to carry your mat? The man who healed me did. Who was it? I have no idea. He didn't even know it was Jesus. He had no idea. But he got healed. I guess he didn't have much faith. Come on, guys, think with me. We're so limited by this stuff where, well, they, you know, I mean, they are cussing when I'm praying for them. Whoa. <laughs> Careful, Jesus, don't listen. <laughs> they don't know him. Yeah, but they're Christians. Yeah, but they did this. Yeah, but they did that. Listen, it's the kindness and goodness of God that leads people to repentance. That miracle can be their breakthrough to get to the place where they see clearly. There are so many people that have been offended. They believe that God did something. They believe that God did it. God has gotten the label of coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He is not the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He came to give us life and life abundantly. I have to know where I'm praying from. I have to take out the limitations and limit God. There are no limitations. The only limitation is between your ears. I promise you, believing the wrong thing when you, when you try to pray in faith, if the, only, if the only thing in you isn't God wants him healed. Here, if I pray for somebody and not see him healed, I don't come up with an excuse. I don't come up with a reason. That's pride. Pride says, well, you know, obviously... Couldn't be me. How to be them? People hate that, especially ministers. Oh, especially pastors, especially leaders. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say. I just, I'm waiting for the day when this becomes so profuse that when someone tries to give a sick person an excuse of why it didn't happen. They say, well, I thought you were the man of God. I thought you had the power. Because they get sick and tired of listening to our excuses of why they're not healed. Am I, do I want them to be in forgiveness? Absolutely. Have I seen Christians not receive healing before? Absolutely. But I'm telling you that they have to see his goodness. They have to see his kindness. It's the only thing that leads them to repentance. And when they see that, it changes everything. Guys, we've so limited God. We limited him. We don't have to. Like God is unlimited. It says the same power. Same, same. How about this? John 14, 12. Jesus, Jesus says, he who believes in me, the same things that I do, the same works that I do, same works. Let's talk about the works. Jesus said, if you don't believe in me, John 10, if you don't believe in me through the things that I say, at least believe in me through the works that I do, for it's the Father that dwells in me. It does the works. So Jesus said in John 14, 12, he who believes in me, these same works that I do and greater works that they're going to do because I'm going to go to be with the Father. Jesus said, John 16, ready? He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict, I said it in the last service, he's going to convict the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they don't believe in me, of righteousness because I'm going to go to be with the Father. On the day when Jesus ascended into heaven to lay blood on the mercy seat, what happened was instead of judgment came mercy. What we don't see is that. If we see that, it'll change your life. If I wake up in the morning convicted of righteousness, I can never be condemned by shame. If I wake up in the morning convicted that I am right with God, that I have favor with God, that I am in love with God and God's in love with me, the change is that, do you love God? Yes. But do you know 
that God loves you. The shift is Matthew 7, when he says, not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom on that day. On that day, they will say, didn't we do these things? Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we heal? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? And he will say, away from me. I never knew you, you who practiced lawlessness. So what he said was there's a place from going to you saying, you know that you know God to where you know that he knows you. And that place can only be established through the intimacy that comes from righteousness, that comes from right standing with God, that if God is for you, who could be against you? This builds up the Christian soul with confidence. I actually call it Godfidence. With confidence of who God's created you to be so that you can walk in any situation and you can realize that if there's depression there, it needs to go. If there's sickness there, it needs to go. If there's anxiety there, it needs to go. If there's a hurt shoulder, it needs to go. If there's a hurt knee, it needs to go. If there's death, it needs to go. To where we can look at the mountain and realize this is nothing for our king. where no matter what situation I'm up against, there's nothing bigger than the goodness and mercy and love of God. To where when I step in as God's ambassador, I have become an ambassador of reconciliation. Reconciling people back to God, not imputing their trespasses against them. Understand this, do, do people need to be born again? Absolutely. Do they live in sin and need that thing confronted? Absolutely. I have never seen anything confront that stuff like the love of God. I've never seen anything confront it so wholeheartedly to where they realize they didn't believe in God. This God, they didn't believe him, just healed them and made them whole. What are they gonna do with this now? Now they have to process, I, I was delivering ice. Let me just share a couple testimonies and then we're gonna pray. You guys all right? Okay, I, 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 I'm a teacher. I, I'm thinking, I have to get your soul to see the truth. It's one thing just to pray for you. It's another thing to make you the person that prays for everyone. And if I understand who I am and I start to eat the meat that's in the word, the meat is righteousness, by the way. Are you with me? I shared it earlier. By this time, you ought to be a teacher, but you need someone to take you back. Uh, uh, Hebrews 5, are you with me? You need someone to take you back to the very first principles and oracles of God. The first principles and oracles of God are righteousness. It's building on that. And you need someone, and you need milk instead of solid food, for solid food is for the mature, who have their senses trained, come on, between good and evil, because they have been trained in righteousness. The training in righteousness is the strong meat of the word. You have to get the milk in you in order to move to the meat. And the meat is righteousness. That is where everything comes from because righteousness bears its fruit unto holiness. God wants us to bear the fruits of righteousness. It is really, really, really important. If this doesn't get strengthened in your life, you're not gonna bear the fruit of righteousness. What's gonna happen is you will let culture, culture infect you and you will sacrifice truth on an altar of cultural relevance. And that is not okay. That is demonic strategy, especially, look at our country, buddy. We are where we are because the church has been silent. The church has been silent. When this thing hits your heart, you can never be silent. You'll be violent in the kingdom. You will, to destroy hell for a living. That's why you're alive. You are alive to remind the devil every day you messed up when you crucified our king because he's not dead, he's alive. So I was delivering ice and I, I saw a man go into his car like this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta pray for that guy. Now, I had to make sure that my production at the ice company kept up at top level. I need to make sure I'm competing with the best in the company. If I'm gonna pray for the sick, I can't allow that to influence whether my job is good or bad. I have to have an excellent job, do my job as under the Lord and pray for the sick as I am because no boss wants somebody that lacks in production for the sake of praying for people. Don't be a flake. Go after God with your whole heart. Don't say, I'm called to pray. No, you're there to work. Yeah, but dude, I'm under grace. Stop it. Yeah, but I'm called to ministry. Do your job well. Be faithful in the little things. And when God sees you faithful, then he moves you out here. What are you going to do? Get into ministry so that you can teach people how to get into ministry? 
no. And I just, just try to get into ministry. You already are in ministry. When you're born again, you entered in. You're in ministry. You're a minister. Start to believe who you are. No, I'm not against a call to be in, but I didn't try to get in. I got drafted. But I was, I was having fun, sucker punching the devil all day. Bap. It was awesome. This one guy was walking across. I said, sir, I said, what's wrong with you? He goes, my leg's short. Had polio as a kid, son. I said, no way. I said, man, I just met Jesus. He goes, oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. He was so excited. He wasn't excited about miracles. He was excited that I gave my life to Jesus. So I'm sharing it, you know, and I said, well, let me, let me see. Let me see how short the leg is. So I set him down in the car. It's about four inches short, three and a half, four inches. He has a big sole on his shoe because of polio. I said, man, I said, you want to see something awesome? He goes, yeah. I said, Jesus' name, leg grow. And that thing came right out. Now, what I didn't know is he's a cessationist pastor. <laughs> now we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. No joke. This guy goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, stand up. He took his shoe off. He goes, my God. I said, that's right, he's my God too. He goes, what, what is happening? I said, Jesus just healed you. He goes, why? I said, what do you do? He goes, I'm a pastor. I said, that's awesome, man. I gave him a hug. I'm like, that's awesome. Pray for me, man. He looks at me and goes, you don't know what you've done, man. I've taught my whole life that this is not for today. I said, what are you going to tell your church when you come walking with your feet? He looks at me with tears in his eyes. He goes, everything's got to change. I said, man, it sure is good to meet you today. He goes, what's your name? I said, I'm just the ice man, man. I love you. Jesus loves you. He goes, he sure does. I was in California and, and uh, there was a motorcycle accident. I was watching these people drive crazy. The motorcycles go up between the cars like nuts. I'd never seen it before. It was L.A. Okay, well, these guys were gone. So I'm with a guy, um, and he, I'm like, dude, look at that guy that just flew up there. I said, man, I hope there's, like, this is crazy. So a car pulls over. He hits the car, flies up over the car. I'm like, stop the car, dude. He goes, we ain't going nowhere anyway. I said, I'm gone. I ran up there to the accident. He's up there. He twisted his ankle the whole way around the back. Like, it's the whole, I have pictures I should have put up on the screen so all of us could get sick. And eat, and eat, and that lunch that you should have fasted. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Some of you out there are like, what do we do with this guy? Like, just love Jesus, that's all. Love Jesus and get past you. It's awesome. So I walked up there and I said, hey man, I said, come on man, are you all right? He goes, no, oh, screaming, blood's everywhere. I'm down there on the ground, grabbed his arm. He goes, get away from me. I said, I ain't leaving you, buddy. I said, do you know Jesus? He goes, what do you mean do I know Jesus? I said, buddy, do you know Jesus? And he's screaming at me and blood spitting out of his mouth. I don't know how bad the injuries are. All I know is I need to know whether he knows the Lord. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him and I'm sharing. Miss Jamie said I could go over if I needed to. <laughs> Mama said, it's okay for... I'm not going to go far, but, but I am at one minute and 40 seconds, and we didn't even pray yet. Okay, I will. So this man is yelling at me and screaming. He goes, why are you doing this? I said, because I love you. You don't even know me. I said, I love you. And he's looking at me. He goes, why? I said, man, because Jesus has plans for you, buddy. Here, I didn't know he's in a bike gang and all that stuff. I mean, he's rowdy and wild. And this guy that's with me, he's a minister. He's freaking out. He's like, oh, oh my gosh, dude, what is going on? There's blood everywhere. Like, aren't you afraid? Nah. What's in that blood is not stronger than the resurrection power of God in me. I'm not kidding. And I'm not just popping off. I promise you I'm not. So the cops come, LAPD. He goes, who are you? Were you in the accident? I said, no. He said, get the blank away from him. I said, no. I said, do you know who Jesus is? He goes, shut up. I said, no. <laughs> I did. And the guy holding my hand, he goes, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I said, bro, I know what the EMTs are doing. I'm keeping his neck solid. He's not moving. I'm just holding him in place. He goes, don't talk. I said, no. 
So I'm asking him if he knows Jesus. The LAPD is freaking out on me. I mean, he's screaming at me, belligerent, like crazy. Like, this is an accident. Who are you? I said, I'm a man that loves God. I don't even believe in God. I don't care. I love you. He's mad. See, most Christians are like, oh my gosh, what do you do? Because you think you're going to die. You're never going to die. Come on, being martyr is an opportunity to be with Jesus. You're like, oh my gosh, you keep saying it. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm never going to live my life for me. I'm going to live it for the one that gave himself for me. Colossians. Come on, Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, all over the Bible. Have you been crucified with Christ? And the life that you live, you no longer live for you, but you live by faith in the one that gave himself for you. Do you live a crucified life or do you live a you life? I think we need to live a him life. It's the best life ever. It's the abundant life. Any other life isn't abundant. Any life that's not surrendered isn't abundant. So this cop is freaking out. All of a sudden, the EMTs come. I said, bro, I got to leave you. And I prayed for him for healing. I didn't see his ankle twister. I wish I did. It was a crazy, crazy time. The cop goes, it's time. I said, I understand. Because when the EMTs come, grace is up. You got to let them have So I asked him if they knew Jesus. The one guy did. I said, awesome. I wiped the blood off my hands. I said, man, I said, this guy, I said, don't forget, Jesus loves you, buddy. He goes, man. He's just, he's freaking out. I shared the gospel with him. He didn't pray with me right there. I ended up like the scenes getting done. There's a guy, a business guy that was there with a suit on. He's like holding traffic back. He's just standing back. He's crying. I said, are you okay? He goes, no, nah, man, I ain't okay. I said, why? He goes, I've gone to church my whole life, man. I had nothing to give that man. He said, you changed my life today, buddy. I said, that's awesome, man. What are you going to do? I'm going to live for Jesus, buddy. I said, that's awesome. What do you get when you live your life full on for God? People see an example of a burning one and they want to burn. I went to the cop and I said, hey, is it? He goes, bro, he goes, get out of here. I said, not before I get a hug. He said, he said, I am not hugging you. I said, how about a handshake? He shook my hand. I said, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I said, bless his name. Jesus' name. What's he going to do? Hit me? Shoot me? I'll take one for the team, buddy. Whatever. It's pretty powerful. Two years later, my buddy gets an email. The guy that was with me, the minister guy that was totally freaked out because I stopped. That's the second accident we stopped at. Gets an email. From his, from his friend who's a tattoo artist. The tattoo artist saw the picture of the man and said, I did that guy's tattoo. I know who he is. Oh, wow. So they went and they contacted him. So I FaceTimed this biker guy. He said, you know, the day that, you were, that, you were on the, that I was on the ground, he said, when I could see you, I looked, I saw these humongous wings <laughs> over top of me, right behind your back. And it shaded me from the sun and I didn't know what it was. Wow. He said, when I went to the hospital, I gave my life to Christ and I've been serving him ever since. I cried. I said, that's awesome. Guys, this isn't complicated. Healing is easy. It's, it is the children's bread and it's, been, it's what you've been given. Can I get everybody to stand up, please? You want to see something really fun? Okay. I want everybody to put their hand on somebody. Well, first, I want to ask this. How many of you need healing in your body? All right, that's good. Just put your hand on somebody. I knew this the, most of the room. That's all right. Okay. Listen, this is not complicated. It's simple. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to pray for the person on the left and right, but I'm going to lead you. And what we're going to do is work the way down from the head to the toes. We'll get everything in between. Are you with me? A lot of times I get words of knowledge. I don't have time. My clock is zero. Let's go. Ready? I want you to say this with me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Head be healed. Head be healed. Neck be healed. Neck be healed. Shoulders be healed. Shoulders be healed. Discs be healed. Discs be healed. Nerves be healed. Nerves be healed. Elbows be healed. Elbows be healed. Wrists be healed. Wrists be healed. Every bit of pain leave the body. Knees be, Knees be healed. 
hips be healed. Hips be healed. Sciatic nerve be loosed. Sciatic nerve be loosed. Digestive system, Digestive system. Be, healed. be healed. Liver, Liver. Be, healed. be healed. Kidneys, Kidneys. Be, healed. be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. We thank you. Thank you. Cancer, Cancer. Be, healed. be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Diabetes, Diabetes. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. name. Neuropathy. Neuropathy. Get out. Get out. In Jesus' name. name. 100% wholeness. Deaf ears. ears. Open. Open. In Jesus' name. name. Blind eyes. eyes. Open. Open. In Jesus' name. name. Mental disorders. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Problems, in the throat. Problems in the throat. Be healed. Be healed. Thyroid. Thyroid. Be, healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Kidney, stones. Kidney stones. Be removed, Be removed. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. I want everybody in here right now to check your body physically. Move around and check and do something that was hard to do. Just try it. Just do it. Move around. Move your shoulders. Move your back. Bend over. Check your knees. Just do it. Do it for 10 seconds. Do something that was hard. Whoa. All right. If you can tell, there's noticeable change in your body. Wave both hands over your head. Wave your hands if there's noticeable change. That's awesome. If you have a deaf ear, I want you to put one hand up. Okay, people around them, put your hand on their ears. Keep your hand up until people get around you, please. Okay, don't pray yet. On the count of three, We're just going to yell pop and deaf ears are going to open. Are you ready? It's not in the pop. It's in the name of Jesus. I know you know that, right? I know. Okay. One, two, three. Pop! If your ear just opened, I want to see your hand. I'm serious. (laughs) That's so good. Right there. Wave your hand if your ear just opened right now. Wave your hand. Come on. If your ear just opened, wave your hands like this. Look. Look around the room. Look. Up there too? Come on. (laughs) That's so good. It's good? Your ears open? Come on. Listen, America's not... No different than Africa. Don't don't say in yourself that you got to see miracles in other countries. My country needs miracles right now. Are you with me? Put your hand on somebody real quick again. Hearing aids. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Awesome. That's awesome. He almost hit me with his hearing aids. Praise God. (laughs) It's awesome. All right. If you have a heart condition, put your hand up. Jesus is going to heal your heart condition right now. All right. Just just put your hand up if you have a heart condition. All right. Someone around you, put your hand on their heart. Jesus healed me of congestive heart failure. He completely healed me. I had 20% ejection fraction. And Jesus completely healed my heart. And it's at 76%, which 65 is normal. It's above normal right now. So God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Hearts, we command you be healed. In Jesus, I speak new hearts. New hearts in Jesus' name. Absolute wholeness. Absolute healing. In the name of Jesus. Brand new hearts right now. Hearts be healed. In Jesus' name. No trouble. No more trouble. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brand new. I thank you, Father, for wholeness in Jesus' name. Keep praying. Brand new hearts. Jesus' name. 
Brand new hearts. Ejection fraction, you get up. In Jesus' name, you be healed. No more AFib in Jesus' name. Absolutely canceled. No more. AFib be healed. Lung disorders be healed. Asthma get out in Jesus' name. We thank you for complete wholeness, God, right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Every bit. No more. Jesus' name. Complete healing and wholeness, God. In Jesus' name. Wholeness. If you had trouble with the rotator cuff, shoot your arm up in the air right now. Bring it down and bring it up. 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 If your shoulder's healed and, you, and it's gone, wave your hand in the air. Well, this is not complicated. If you have a heel spur on your foot, you have heel spurs. They are painful as all get out. Who are you? Heel spur. You do? All right, ready? Those that have a heel spur, on the count of three, we're gonna stomp on our foot. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Better work, amen? Jesus, we thank you for heel spurs being removed right now. Father, I thank you that on the count of three, when we stomp on our foot, they're gone. One, two, three, stomp. Come on. If, if the pain is gone, wave your hand at me. I'm so serious. This is not complicated. Sleeping disorders. If you have sleeping insomnia, sleeping disorders. Come on, Jesus is going to heal that. Why? Because you need to sleep in Jesus' name. Amen. Someone around you, put your hand on their head. We break the power of the absence of sleep. And we say, God gives his beloved rest. In the name of Jesus, we break the power. We break the power of night terrors in Jesus' name. Complete freedom and healing in the name of Jesus. Absolute wholeness, God, right now. No more loss of sleep except, except in the meetings. <laughs> Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. If, if you have track marks or cutting scars on your body, why don't you lift your hand so I can see who you are? People don't even like to admit that, but we want them to leave. It's okay. All right, you with me? This isn't a lift of shame. This is a, hey, that's not who I am anymore. Come on. All right. Okay. So people around them, put your hand up. People around them, you don't have to keep your hand up. Put it down. You got people around you. All right. I, I've, just, I've just got the privilege of seeing so many scars removed, so many track marks removed, so many cutting scars removed, so many hep C's removed, so many sexually transmitted diseases removed. Why? Because God doesn't see you like that anymore. If God's not going to judge you for where you've been, how can where you've been still judge you? Jesus paid a price for us to be forgiven and to be healed. It's the covenant. Are you with me? All right. So I want you to just pray with me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus we, speak track marks, we speak to track marks and cutting scars, cutting scars disappear, disappear right, now. right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Skin, be Skin be clean, because that is not who you are. That's not who you are. In, the in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the cleaning, the for the cleaning of, our skin. of our skin in Jesus' name. I want you to look and see if those scars are disappearing. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Are they less? They're gone. <laughs> They're gone. Try to, talk, try to talk her out of it. Who else is there leaving? Yeah, they're less. We want to see they're less. What's going on? Are they gone? Okay, let's pray again. Come on. 
Come on, man. Let's do this. Let's go after this thing. You guys with me? Don't ever think that if you pray and you don't see the full thing happen that you missed it. Come on, let's believe God and go after this fight for our brothers and sisters. It's a big deal. All right, so Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. The complete cleansing of skin, the removal of STDs, the removal of hepatitis C, removal of, of scars, of track marks, in Jesus' name. Body be healed because of what Jesus Christ paid a price to give us. Father, we thank you that by your stripes we are healed. In Jesus' name. Look at your scars again. See if they're gone. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Amen. What's going on? Who here has seen more breakthrough with scars disappearing? <laughs> That's awesome. Come on. Listen, sometimes we're like, oh man, they didn't go. No, 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 no. Contend. Go after this thing. It's not like, well, God, what about me? Stop it. You're part of the body of Christ. This isn't to make you depressed. This is to show you there's so much more than what we've stepped into. Jesus is outstanding. He's amazing. And he is our healer. If you have metal in your body, put your hand up. All right. What do you say we get rid of the metal? People are like, what? We had one guy that we prayed for. He had two bars in his back and he couldn't even bend. And he bent, and he went back to the doctor, and the bars were still there, and he's fully bending, and the bars would have not allowed him to bend. The doctors are like, please get away. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Are you ready? Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, <clears throat> we thank you for healing. We thank you for wholeness. We thank you that you'd remove metal. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Bodies, be bodies be healed, skin be healed, skin be healed. Organs, be healed. organs be healed. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus mighty name. We, thank we thank you for 100% recovery, absolute healing, absolute. for the top of our head, to the bottom of our, the bottom of our feet, right now. right now. In Jesus' name. I want you to try to move that part that had metal in it or check and see if you can feel it. <laughs> what do you feel? Can you, you just had surgery. What couldn't you do? Do you have any pain? None. <clears throat> so awesome. If you had metal that stopped you from moving in a certain way in your body and now you can move beyond that, put your hand up so I can see. <laughs> That's awesome. So good. <clears throat> huh? Wait, wait, wait. Say, tell me, understand, help me understand what that means. And so we just did what we did, you know, by declaring what you were yeah. declaring. And she said that previously when she would tap on her head because of the metal plate, there would be an echo. She said, there is no echo. She's tapping on her head right now. Amen. 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 That's awesome. If, if you've been diagnosed with cancer and you're here, put your hand up right now. Okay. All right. I want people around them. We're going to pray. 
Cancer is from hell. It has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with the devil. Even when you look into it, it's the division of cells. It's absolutely demonic. I want you to speak to this and I want you to tell it to leave. By the way, we just had a testimony of a lady that was at one of our power and love schools. We just did our 180th power and love school, which is training and identity schools to where we send people out on outreaches during the schools. And one of the ladies uh, got prayer. She was paralyzed in her leg since 2007 and her paralyzed leg got healed, but also she had multiple tumors on her breast. She went to the bathroom to check and all of the breast tumors are completely gone. So in the name of Jesus, we command cancer to leave in Jesus' name. Cancer, get out in Jesus' name. 100% healing for the body, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet in Jesus' name. While we were praying, while we were praying for that, I saw someone's right foot that was totally numb coming back to life. And I don't know who that was, but I really felt it's like almost like a might have been neuropathy or even something that medicine had damaged. But in your right leg, there was numbness in your right leg. Is it gone? Gone. So good. So awesome. Oh. <laughs> if you have had these voices speak to you, kill yourself, I want you to lift your hand right now. Come on, be honest. It's okay. I'm going to pray for you. Come on. If you have voices telling you to end your life, I want you to lift your hand right now. It's okay. It's good. Come on. Get around him. Anybody that has their hand up right now. I want you to speak to them and I want you to tell them that their life is worth living. They were purchased with a price. Jesus Christ is Lord and King. And I want you to say this. Spirit of suicide. Out. In Jesus' name. Now. In Jesus' name. Say it again, out, out. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Truth, Truth. In. in, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Now I want you to bless them and I want you to speak over them right now. Just bless them. Speak over them right now. Bless them. Bless them. Come on, speak words of encouragement, edification, and love over them right now. I want you to look at them and tell them they will never be the same. Amen. If you have been healed today, of, some, of one thing, of something, it doesn't matter what it was, I want you to raise both your hands over your head and wave them high. Amen. Can we give Jesus a mighty shout? Come on! Amen. Love you, Love you, Love you too.